what is going on, everybody? It's your boy Scotty. You already know what it is. We're back with another one. Today we're doing a film breakdown and um of the final drives involved in the FAMU and um Southern game. I'm gonna play you a clip from Dooley that really set me off because what bothers me about the head coach of Southern, you know, of Southern, right? Is he talks as if if nobody else understands the game of football, that everybody else that is critiquing him doesn't understand the logic or the strategies associated with the game of football. So I'm going to play you the football. I mean, I'm going to play you the clip and then I'm going to systematically break everything down wrong with what he said. I'm going to go through FAMU's drive. I'm going to go through Southern's drive. And we're going to dismantle everything he said, because what really has to what, what what you have to pull out of it is just how arrogant Eric Dooley is just to say that I made a mistake or we should have done something differently. You know what I'm saying? Taking the onus to say, hey, that one's on me. We could have done something better. So here's the clip from Dooley. Stand football. If you drop eight, what's going to make you be open in dropping eight and cover? If you take a look at football and you understand football, if you drop eight, what's going to make you be open in dropping eight in coverage and you only got four guys out in coverage? So you just got to play smart and understand what you want to do. Uh, we knew how we can do it. We still had an opportunity. Uh, I, I think one more catch, we're probably five yards from the goal line. So uh, what took place, you know, it's so easy in hindsight to, to make a call, but you got to make sure that you having the next call in mind too as well. We, we all right, so and we'll get to that other half of that, but I just wanted to show that in the beginning. Now, when I get into this fam, you drive, I want you guys to see the stark difference of how Willie calls the game and how Eric Dooley calls the game. And I keep telling you guys this the one thing about Dooley that you have to give credit to him, Musa, and fam, you is when they had to have a drive, when all the money and the marbles was on the table. He put it together systematically. And if we're being honest, it will, if you're looking at it, if you're looking at it from a far view, they were both in the same situation. One play caller gets the job done. The other one doesn't. All right. So here we go. This is the first play, right? He does. He has. A, I, I love the motion guy outside of this running back right here. I absolutely love that. Um, at the end of the day, let me, you know what? Let me go to, let me go to my full screen on my, hold on. Let me, let me, let me get over here. So you guys can, there we go. All right. So look, let me, let me, let me break this down with you, with you guys as best I can. Right. Because the one thing that you want to do when you start a drive is just to get a completion, Right. Is just to get a completion. You want to move the chains forward. So what does Willie do? He dials up a simple hitch route. Hey, let's get the chains moving. Let's get it going, right? Because essentially, even though it's six minutes in the game, this is their two-minute drill, right? Or you can say four-minute drill, but that what Willie is trying to do is trying to, I'm going to eat up as much clock as I can, and we're going to go down the score. Starts with an easy hitch route. Boom, picks it up. Let's keep it moving with Kamara Young. Now tell me that's not a mismatch. You put your, He put his tight end at the X position. That's called a setup, right? They, they come back to the same play. Boom. The guy gets beat. He gets sacked. Right? The guy gets beat. He gets sacked. They come second and 16, right? Now, if you're a great defense, this is where you want your offensive to be. You want the offensive uh, players to be in this position, right? He has motion. What does that show you? Let me go back because a lot of y'all don't understand what this stuff does. This tells Musa, right? This tells Musa that it's zone. Nobody shifts. Nobody goes with him. This is a zone. I got to read it accordingly, right? He got trips to the boundary side. He got trips to the field side. So let's roll it. Boom. The Kamari stays in to help. Extra protection. He hits Raleigh coming back inside. Great. 
Absolutely great, right? Love the route by Riley, right? Because I can, I can kind of tell that this probably was a flood concept, right? But Riley, as a great receiver that he does, he's savvy. He's a veteran in the game. He kind of motions it back inside, right? No, nope, it's a curl. It's a curl concept. I can see it right there. It's a, it's a curl concept. If you look at the top right here, it's a curl concept. So they got the flat and the curl. He keeps working inside. Musa sees him. Boom, hits him. Thumbs in, right? Boom. Nice and easy. Easy read for Musa. Simple, easy read. Got the pocket going, moving the pocket, getting his eyes. Love it. Got the extra protection with Kamari Young. Love it. Here we go. Third and four. You need it. This play right here. See, let me tell you. This is why you pay Willie Simmons the big bucks. This is next level play calling right here. You're not going to see this from Eric Dooley. You're not going to see this from Eddie Robb. You're not going to see this from Connell Maynard. This is high-level play calling right here. Watch what he does with the slot receiver. He motions the slot guy. Okay, it's man. I know it off the rip. It's man. And I know who's guarding the slot receiver. It's the safety. So what does he do? He motions them out, back in, boom. That, that is high. That's easy. That's pitch and catch. This is high level play calling right here. You can't do nothing with this route, right? Because you have the receiver at the top. He's, he takes an inside release to hold off the safety, right? So the safety can't jump on the short guy. He has to go deep. They swap it out. Easy pitch and catch. Easy pitching. I this is that to me, to me, that was the best play call in the because it's a drive, it's a it keeps the drive alive. It was a huge pickup, and it was an easy throw for Musa. High level play caller right here. You're not going exactly, Bridges, exactly what they do. It's an easy read for Musa. Dobbs in little Texas route. We I, I, I call this a Texas route, right? It's nice. It's absolutely per, per tag. All right. Now, I, I gave you a freeze frame because when they when they squeeze it down, you can't see it. But you see Marcus Riley all the way down here to the field, and you see a slot receiver. So when you see the concept, you got to understand that it was four people in the route because once they squeeze in, you can't see it anymore. I just want to show you guys that Marcus Riley is at the bottom here. Right? So this is – listen, man. This is a big time throw. Opposite hash out route. That is a big time throw. Big time, right? You got to really trust your arm to, to throw this on a rope for the money. Absolutely love it. Absolutely love this, right? By Musa. Great throw by Musa. Hits the out route. It's the first down, easy pitch and catch, right? Here we go. Now they're in the red zone. They're feeling it. Everything's going their way. False start. Oh, shucks, right? Don't let it hinder them. Listen, we still good. We still good. Now it's first and 15. Once again, let me show you how. Okay. If you watch this game, you know how much that. Willie was killing with this tight end, right? So you don't know what he's going to do with this play. You don't know if he's going to have this tight end block in and drift out. You don't know if he's going to have him do a seam concept. You don't know if he's going to block because he's been involved with so much, right? So I want to show you the action that they use on this play to free up, right? Boom. This motion, just the play action. Having Kamari, the running backs, everybody loses their loses their responsibility, opens the hole up right here. Musa throws it right where they should have been. Boom. Now, this is just a bad tackle. This is just an absolute bad tackle right here. I, I listen, man. I listen, just get the kid on the ground. I don't need you to get a fumble. I don't need you to do any. I just need because the kids that listen, he's down. Tackle him. Let's him go. 
pitch and catch in the end zone. Simple, very simple, but he had been showing this formation all game. That you see the action. They have to keep, they have to be honest, right? Because why? This linebacker is reading his key. This linebacker is reading his key. He got to read that guard and where the guard goes, that's where he's taking him. That's why he goes down. The safety wants to fill the hole as well. And then right off the play action, boom, I'm coming right behind you. I'm filling in right where you left and boom, too easy. You got it, man. Listen, this is high level. This is high level play calling right here. Now, Let's get to the Southern Drive, right? And what I want to start off with is if this. If you take a look at foot. I want, listen, I want y'all to listen to what this man Dooley said, and I'm going to bring this back up, but I want y'all to listen to this man said. If you take a look at football and you understand football, if you drop eight, what's going to make you be open in dropping eight in coverage and you only got four guys out? In now, let's be very clear. I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed, but God damn it, I can count. And this ain't eight. This is one, two, three, four Bama's on the line of scrimmage. Where is he getting this drop eight at? Let me explain something to y'all if you haven't watched enough swag football. If you haven't watched enough swag football, nine times out of ten, Nobody in the SWAC rarely is going to play four down and drop out. What they A and M might do it a lot. They 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 do that a lot. But a lot of teams are just going to send three and sit everybody back. They're going to sit and prevent, right? So there is no way possible that you can tell me that fam, you was dropping eight. It's as it's as clear as night and day. One, two. Three, four, and what does he decide to do? Football, and you understand football. If you drop eight, what's going to make you be open in dropping eight in coverage and you only got four guys out in coverage? So you just got to play smart and understand what you want to do. Come uh, on, man. How we can do it. We what are we doing right here? What are we doing? On You got two minutes. Two minutes. And you go with a... <laughs> Still had an opportunity. This makes no now listen. This is my issue. See, what, what Dooley fails to realize is he's not talking to an average podcaster. I have played the game, I have coached the game, I have been in part of football all my life. The one thing that you will not do to me is tell me something and I won't double check. Now, this Play, this is when they were playing against Jackson State, right? Let me explain to you what happens when you put your hand out as a quarterback, right? You're telling your center, don't snap the ball. I'm getting another play call. It's called an adjustment or an audible. So in that time, if you're moving fast enough to get to the line of scrimmage, just like he did in this one, right? See how they look over? You see how he looks over? That's called an oh, oh, they oh, they're changing the play up. Cool. So Dooley, Southern, don't let him live with saying, oh, I don't know what you guys have seen. It was drop eight. No, sir, it was not. You're on the sideline. It ain't no drop eight. So what should have happened was simply this: they got to the line really quickly. Dooley should have noticed that they had four down linemen. And threw the ball. I don't give a damn if it was three down linemen. I'm still running. The, I'm still throwing the ball. Because FAMU's not going to play. play FAMU's not going to play press man. FAMU's probably going to play a cover three, a cover four, a prevent style defense, keep everything in front of you, and make the tackle. Come on, man. Man, we're not boo-boo the fool out here, my guy. The disrespect. We're not boo-boo the fool out here. Stop playing with me. Let's get back to it. Run, no gain for Kendrick Lyons. Can y'all hear that? Unbelievable. Yeah. It's first down. You're down by seven with less than two and a half to go. You've got to unload. You've got to say we're going to be able to.
And you can see Uncle Reggie in the back right here with the little with the with the with the blue. Yeah, y'all can hear that. I just I really want y'all to hear. I really want y'all to hear what what um <laughs> what Jay Walker you said. You have to go. You've got to unload. You've got to say we're going to be able to protect the quarterback and throw the football. Right. So here we go. Now look. Same thing, no motion, no movement. They're playing. Look at look at how look at how well you can assume they're gonna drop into their zones, but look how far off they're playing, right? So let's go, let's run it forward. So you got the drag right here, you got the drag right here, you got the flare out. So you should be going essentially right here. It's an easy read, it's an easy read, right. Goes there. It's an easy read. Everybody else gets pulled out the zone. Easy read. They pick up uh, their, their 10. Now, what a lot of people fail to realize is Dooley tried to run it again. The only reason he wasn't able to because they called a false start. Like, I have never. I have never. He tried to run it again, and they, the only reason that play didn't go b backwards is because they called a false start. Jeez Louise, boy, I tell you, you can't, you can't pay for this. Can't pay for this ignorance. Here we go, right? You see it here? Press man locked up, off man, off man, off man. Listen, if you wanted to keep it easy peasy, you probably could have did something like a quick out, in hitch or something like that to kind of hold down or maybe like an inverted hitch or something like that and read it that way. But let's see what we do here. Well, pretty much that's what you got. Uh, see, he, ha he has a guy right here. He's trying to go to the guy in the back right here. You got the drag, but you got to hit. You got to hit one of these guys. I wouldn't. I'm definitely not hitting him because I mean, you literally got three people right here. But you can hit him. See if he can turn up and get you something. He steps up, rips it, uh, and misses him. Just misses Whitfield. All right. Now, here we go. Minute 19 left, second and 15. That bad man, Anthony Dunn, here he comes. Oh, my God. Beats him with a nasty swim move. Jesus Christ. He didn't have, he didn't, boy, he didn't see that coming. He set that boy up. Something right here at the top of the screen. Beats him with a nasty swim move right over the top. Sack City. Oh no! I'm sorry. Wrong play. My bad. But I, he did beat him bad. When that, that was a nice. That was a nice. I thought. Ooh, I thought that was Sac City. He beat that boy bad. Great play by August Petrie. Right. Here we go. Press man again at the top right here. Pretty much the same formation out here. First to ten, and he runs it again. <laughs> Man, what are we doing? And he runs it again. Time ticking, 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 ticking. Now you got to rush. Okay, see, this is the issue with this, right? Let me, let me explain something to y'all. Now, mind you, the clock stopped, right? Mind you, the clock stopped. After he picked up the first down with the catch, right? They spot the ball, the clock runs, right? So at this point in time, you're at 107. You you snap the ball at 103, you run it, you pretty much give up about. All right. We had 10 seconds, 13 seconds. You're at 20. You pretty much just gave up 20 seconds trying to run that play. 22 seconds. Then you get, then you get beat and get a sack. Now you got to use your timeout, right? Now you're at what? 34 seconds. So you gave up. You pretty much gave up about 30 seconds. You pretty much gave up 30 seconds to run the run play. And then you get sacked on the next play. You come back on third and 13. You... <laughs> I mean, like, this is such a bad read. Look at this, man. Look, look at this. Look at this. It's such a bad read. 
The kid is wide open. He's wide open. They're bailing, right? They need to be doing, he, actually, he needs to be doing something towards the sideline out here, not going into the middle. But he's open. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you could probably squeeze it in here. But they're playing, ba they're bailing. If, and he has time. I, don't, I mean, he has time to hit that. He just doesn't see it, right? So now you're on fourth down. Now you're on fourth down. Now, let me be very clear. You're on fourth down. Let's be very clear because I, I want you guys to understand the stupid stuff that comes out of Dooley's mouth, right? He may, If you don't understand football and you didn't watch the game, he makes it sound better than what it was. You're 20 seconds. You're on the 50, right? No timeouts. This is what happens. So you tell me, you tell me if they win this game, if he makes this catch. You just, you tell me if they win this game. Let's say he makes the catch right here. 10 seconds, right? Let's say he makes the catch. Now, you have 10 seconds to get everybody on the ball, to snap the ball, to, 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 to spike it, to get one more play at the touchdown. You tell me if that was going to benefit anybody. Great opportunity, though. Great opportunity. So, once again, I'm going to go back to what he said. Coverage. So, you just got to play smart and understand what you want to do. Uh, we knew how we can do it. We still had an opportunity. Uh, I, I think one more catch, we're probably five yards from the goal line. So, uh, what took place, you know, it's so easy. You see what I'm saying? One more catch were five yards from the goal line. You didn't have the time. You had already, you see, this is the shit I'm talking about. This is shit that be pissing me off. You didn't have the time. You didn't have the timeout that you could count on because you had to use it because you tried to run and, get, and you got sacked on the next play. So you didn't have a timeout to even call a timeout to give you one more shot. It was 10 seconds when he touched the ball and landed, right? So the clock stops, right? The clock stops. And you, and you get 10 seconds to come up, and they got to spot the ball and all that type of stuff. So maybe we give you one more play. Maybe we'll give you – I'll give you seven seconds left, right? But you've already put your team in such a hole by the way you were calling the play, the plays leading up, and then, the, and then this last final play of the, of the throw up, right? Now, this is what kills me is the ending. This is when your arrogance is through the roof and you don't see what you did is wrong. Here we go. From the goal line, so – uh, what took place, you know, it's so easy in hindsight to to make a call, but you got to make sure that you having the next call in mind too as well. When you look back at it, do you, do you think you wish you would have did something different? No, absolutely, absolutely not. Guys, let me let me let me explain something to you. If you can, if you telling me, listen, I, I just need y'all to hear what he's saying, and this is just such an arrogance, right? If you could look back, is there anything else you would have done differently? No, absolutely not. So to me, to me, you're telling me you would lose that game 10 out of 10 times. I, I just need y'all to think about that. I just really want y'all to put, if you don't do nothing different, you lose this game 10 out of 10 times. No, I don't want to do nothing different. Nothing different. The announcer doesn't understand why you're running the ball. The people in the stands don't understand why they're running the ball. But you wouldn't change anything. And this is, and listen to his reasoning. Why? Because if you look back and you do the wrong thing and you throw an interception, you don't have another opportunity. You Every play is the possibility of an interception. That shit doesn't make any sense. Every time you drop back to throw the ball, there is an opportunity for an interception. That should not negate the fact that you should be throwing the ball. The ignorant, like y'all, the arrogance of this man is atrocious. Are you kidding me? No. If we throw an interception, it's it's part of the game. It is part of the game. So you're telling me you ran the ball, which made no sense in a two-minute drill, 
just to avoid the possibility of interception, the kid could have fumbled. The kid could have fumbled. Then what? Oh, so, so I, I mean, I, oh, my God. Like, think about this, guys. Like, you really, when you sit and listen to this man talk, it makes no absolute sense of why. Every play in football is a possibility of a turnover. If you look at what happened to uh, Miami and Georgia Tech, where the guys, I mean, uh, Miami, yeah, Miami versus Georgia Tech, the guy is running the ball up the gut, and they strip it from him, and he fumbles. So they were trying to run the clock out to win the game, and that's what happened. So there's no, there is, there's no perfect play in football that negates turnovers or fumbles or interceptions. You just hope that you call the right play and the quarterback makes the right decision. I can get on here and look at it objectively and say, you know what? Hey, that's actually a pretty good call by Dooley. Blood just went the wrong way with the ball. Or that was a great play by the DB or whatever. But when you have a coach like this who can't even take the accountability of saying, you know what? That was on me. How are how is players supposed to follow somebody that won't take accountability for them? But he probably wants players to take accountability for their actions of what they didn't do or what tackle or play they missed or what or what play they don't understand or didn't run the correct way. But this is the guy I wanted. This is the guy I wanted this. I'm t listen, man. I, 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 I listen. I don't care how many suits he wears. I don't care how many ascots he wears. This is a, that, that's a horrible presser. That's a horrible presser. That is an absolute horrible presser. Point blank, period. You, as the head coach, as the head man, need to stand up there and say, I need to do better. I need to coach better. I need to put my players in better positions. What I would have changed is, you know what? I probably shouldn't have ran the ball on the first down. I, I could take the hit on that. That was on me. I thought I saw something. I thought they weren't going to drop in eight. They didn't. We tried to run and try to catch them off guard. That is what that is supposed to look like. Thank you. They wanted Dooley, and now you got him. Once again, I'm going to say this. I'm, I'm going to say this, and I'm going to end it like this. One, this is what y'all asked for. This, this is what y'all this is what y'all was bitching, moaning, clamoring all for. Oh, Pete Richardson guy. We got this guy. He's gonna be back. We're gonna be doing this. Da 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 da. None of that, and none of it, none of it matters when the person at the helm can't take accountability for what he did not do correctly. Right? For what the, you can say whatever you want, Willie going Willie or whatever. Willie Simmons, when they got demolished 59 to 3, he took all the onus on that. He took all the onus. That's on me. I didn't have him ready to play. Blah, 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 blah. Right? But for this guy to sit up here and act like we don't know football. We don't know football. Come on, man. Absolutely. Absolutely stupid. Absolutely stupid. But that, that has been my film breakdown. I wanted to show you guys what it was in reality. Um, from whatever football fantasy Dooley has been living in recently, but it's clear as day. It is clear as day that he got out coached by Willie Simmons, point blank, period. Because once again, I'm gonna keep saying it when the marbles was on the table and everything had to go the right way to make it happen, Willie Simmons did that with him and Musa. Dooley could not do the same, just that simple. Listen, until next time, hey, make sure y'all tune in on Friday. Pre, uh, the pre-snap read will be on the channel uh, tomorrow. Make sure y'all tune in. Pre-snap read with my boy Bridges, my boy Jay, Robin, and all them guys. They're gonna be live on the on the station on the channel Friday, seven or eight o'clock. Make sure y'all tune into that. Listen. Until next time, you know what I'm gonna do. I'm a holler. God bless. <laughs>